This week on the Game Marks Podcast, it is my birthday. So we are playing one of my favorite childhood games, WWF SmackDown 2, Know Your Role. And because it is episode 60, we are drinking one of my favorite beers, Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. And it is also, in addition to those two things, the Game Drunks episode that you guys so graciously unlocked with last year's Game Berry. How does this sequel compare to the original? Will it also receive a double play it forever? Woo! Or will this get hit with the future Endeavor hammer? You're fired! Plug in, put on those nostalgia goggles, and you know what? If you got a, a birthday hat, maybe put on like that little birthday hat that you used to wear as a kid because this week's Game Marks podcast birthday celebration starts now. And now, the Game Mark! Welcome to the Game Drunks Podcast. I'm the man they call Johnny Clash. And I, you know what? I'm the birthday boy, George Feast. And today, we are playing a WWF SmackDown 2 Know Your Role. It's your birthday? I couldn't tell. I didn't hear it 50 freaking times today. But as, mm. <laughs> and as well, always, we love to hear from you. my birthday two days from now, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. And as always, we love to hear from you guys, so please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and make sure to subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you choose to listen and join the conversation on social media at Game Marks Pod. Well, birthday boy. In two days. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. Uh, full disclosure, uh, I am uh, some some seltzers deep. I am some glasses of wine with dinner deep. And uh, I am currently one and a half dogfish head 60-minute IPAs deep. So, um, Bowls Game Drunks deep. Game Drunks podcast is alive and well. And... Uh, yeah. All right. I mean, I got I some catching up to do. I'm only still on my first, so by the I will finish the six pack by the end of this episode. That's a all lie. Right, I will not it. do that. I uh, if you if you have, you know, this is this this is a uh, a six percent. So I think if you have uh, at least two, if you do like two and a half before the episode's over, you'll 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 be feeling okay. So funny story. I golfed last weekend and. Twice, actually. So, Saturday, we took the wives, and I'm usually the best out of my friends. I'm not going to lie. Like, I usually win the day. And for whatever reason, I was off so hard, and my friend won the day. So, when we went back and played oh. Sunday with the other guys, I was like, you know what? I'm going to relax. I'm going to bring a beer. I brought a whole cooler of beer, literally for myself. Like, no one else wanted to drink. <laughs> I finished a 24 of a beta. Then I went to a 24 of a Lagunitas. Then I crushed two Michelobes, and by <laughs> I played worse than the Saturday. I was just going to say, either <laughs> one of two things happened. Either you were going to say that it was the best game of oh, golf no. that you've ever had because you were so calm and your nerves were just totally at ease, or you were absolutely sloshed and you couldn't do anything. No, there was one point it started to get dark out, and I saw like three balls on the ground. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Someone's oh, got to drive yeah, me that's, home. <laughs> that's not good. That's not good. But luckily, luckily, uh, we got in our Clash at the Feast prior to all the alcohol that we uh, started to enjoy. And here we are. It is time. But before we get into this week's game, we've got a lot of things to cover. First, follow up from last week's game, WWF Raw. Are you sticking with your rating from last week? How are you feeling? Any uh, any. No, this this is a game that like stuck in your brain for the last week. Um, I'm not gonna lie, we both hit play it forever. I stand by my play it forever because of nostalgia reasons, which is the reason we do this podcast. Um, looking back at it more, watching the clash at the feast, I was like, this game isn't the best, but it's one of those games you get excited to play or watch because of. Just how it looks. Like, it looks like classic WWF. It takes me back to, like, those days of watching, like, the In Your House VHS tapes. Like, I don't know. I, I'm i sticking with it. What about you? 
Oh, I'm 100% sticking with it. I um, I actually have went back uh, throughout the last week and played it a couple times just because, you know, discovering those mega moves and wanting to know what everyone's mega moves look like, I, I needed to know. Uh, just I wanted to see if I could do it myself. And man, some of them are absolutely insane. I love it. It was great. It just... Yeah, I'm 100% sticking with it. All right, cool, cool. So at least our, uh, you know, our ratings are authentic every week because we usually stick with it. I think there's only been one or two overturns. Yes, but I, I, I think you're right. But guys, the free giveaway. We are now in October. You have one more month. All you have to do is rate our podcast on Apple Podcasts, take that screenshot of the star rating or the comment, whatever you leave, send it to us on social media at GameMarksPod, and you are entered to win a Steel Cage Challenge plug-and-play, courtesy of my wife's Christmas mess-up. Guys, it's free. <laughs> Literally, you could do this I've... while listening to the podcast. I can't stress enough. It's free. I am giving you something for free for just leaving us a rating. It takes two seconds out of your day. Uh, it, I never realized how important like ratings were to like grow a podcast. Like I never rated them until like I had a podcast, and I was like, oh, you know, like I'm gonna rate all the podcasts I listen to now. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, let me say this. Um, you know, we're gonna jump into the next contest that we have currently going on. But I wanted to uh, address two things. One, I'm glad that you're not blaming me for the Steel Cage Challenge Christmas mess up anymore. Uh, that's a big, it's a big move. I'm very proud. It was like a 50, 50 split there. It's not, it's not my fault. I told her. You did not tell her. You showed her a video. I did. I said, I, of you holding the game. You didn't use your words, George. (laughs) Cause you were standing two feet away from me. Um, and, and I gotta say this, you, as we are recording this podcast today, posted up an amazing video of you doing an unboxing of two classic handhelds. And I got to tell you, it may be the most, I, I don't, I try to think of the right word. It is, it is informative. It is fun. It is like the highest production thing that we've <laughs> ever done. There's like you cutting in on yourself. Like it, I, I was very impressed. I find it highly entertaining. So if you haven't already, Go to youtube.com slash game marks podcast and please check out that video that Johnny Clash posted of him reviewing the Stone Cold Steve Austin and the Sting handheld and just let just just watch it and just let the chaos and wonder of that video ensue. <laughs> it is awesome. Like I said, he's cutting it on himself. It's it's awesome. Hey, thanks, George. You know, it's like, I like when we compliment each other. You know, I feel like you, one I, with you. But thanks. Uh, listen, when so, you do something good, I'm going to tell the people <laughs> that you did something good. So with that, I, I want to do more. I like kind of the whole WWF versus WCW thing or WWE, whatever it is. So if you have ideas, I know we've already got sent some. There's the little like Tamagotchi looking WWF handheld games i can't really find them on ebay yet but i'm gonna keep searching i have my search filters on for those i want to do a little more so let me know if you want me to play through unbox anything a classic thing i've had these things sitting here for so long i actually it was another i think like a little tipsy night where i was just sitting on the couch sipping a beer and these things popped up i got the stone cold one first and then from there, I was like, hmm, what else is there? I remember seeing the WCW ones, but I never had them. And I forgot who it was. It was either you. It might have been. I think it was a bunch of people. I tried to convince you, Liam Davis, Smart Mark. Yeah. I was like, everyone get one of these because they link up and we could battle each other. Yes. And I, I got to be honest with you. I think I said that I wanted to get the giant one. <laughs> yeah, why not? I, I'm... I might have to pull the trigger on that. We'll see how uh, how the linking up feature works. If it's reliable, what uh, what it's like. It only but, takes one AAA battery. Weirdly enough, so you're good. You could use my other one from the pack. <laughs> oh, how generous of you! <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, but hey, we are also running another contest. It is the podcast intro contest where you can record yourself doing the intro to the pod. And, uh, you know, we had mentioned last week that this week we are going to play three or some of the entrants. So right now we are going to play the first entrant from the host of Wrestling Cheers, Mr. Justin Summers. All right, here we go. And now, the Game Marks! 
Ah, I like it. I like so it. One. I it's it's pretty good. It, that's definitely a uh, a front runner. Put some 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 badass music behind that. I'd love that. All right. Now, who else we got? Next, the next entrant is John Lombardi. Roll that beautiful bean footage, Johnny. And now, the game marks. All right, John Lombardi, I hear you. I hear you. I kind of like that one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I want to play one more from Adam Selzer, who is a uh, listener. He tweets us, very interactive. Let's, uh, Let's hear what he got. Ladies and gentlemen, the following podcast is scheduled for gaming news, the question of the week, the deep dive, ratings and reviews, clash at the feast, and more. Please welcome your hosts, George Feast, Johnny Clash. Together they are the Game Marks. Oh, dude, that's perfect. That's like the outro. It's like Max's song, but in the intro. (laughs) That's so good. I'm blown away by that. These are all really good. We're gonna have to deliberate. I yeah, think uh, this is. I think maybe this we just have like the top three rolling, right here. Yeah, maybe honestly, maybe we just have like a rolling. Uh, we take the the best three, and they're just on like a loop. Some episodes are Justin Summers. Some episodes are John Lombardi. Some episodes are Adam Salzer. Like maybe maybe they're just like in rotation, and depending on the episode, that's what we do. We just you know we throw Dave in there for the classics. Like maybe that's just the new rotation that we have. I like it. I like it. Yeah, these it's are pretty super good. Thank hard you. to pick. Let's wow. Uh, thank you so much, guys. If we want to do that, let's do that. But if not, let's pick one next week and let's start. I'm I'm 100% in. But up next, George, I think it's time for some gaming news. Tell me what happened. Are you looking to get a better grip on life? How about your video games? Well, VGF Gamers are the largest silicone gaming brand in the USA. They have a variety of different and unique skins for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One controllers and consoles. Check out their products at VGFGamers.com and use code GAMEMARKS to receive 15% off of your order at checkout. That's G-A-M-E-M-A-R-K-S at checkout. VGF Gamers. Better grip, better style. PS5's backwards compatibility details have seemingly leaked via a mistake in the PlayStation Store. Unfortunately, there's still no word if PS3, PS2, or PS1 games are backwards compatible, which Sony recently confirmed is not on the table right now due to a lack of resources. As for the new info, it comes way of the PlayStation Store's webpage source code, which appears to be having issues that lead to it revealing information not supposed to be seen by the public. For example, there are messages that let the consumer know that while playing PS4 games on the PS5, some functionalities may not be available. The message then links to information about PS5 backwards compatibility, but at the moment, the link does not exist. Insomniac Games has confirmed that save data from the PlayStation 4 version of Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales will be transferable to the PS5. The developer confirmed the news on Twitter following some initial confusion among fans. As such, those that plan on holding off on buying the PS5 this year will be able to play Miles Morales on the PS4 knowing that their progress and achievements will carry over to the newer system later on. In addition, the PS4 version will also receive a free next-gen upgrade on the PS5. Also in the leaks, a Rockstar Games employee has leaked an unannounced game kicking off speculation about GTA 6, Bully 2, LA Noir 2, and other rumored Rockstar titles. As you may know, Rockstars is famously known for running a tight ship, and they hardly ever have leaks that lead to anything. However, when you employ as many people as Rockstar Games does, leaks are inevitable. Fortunately for Rockstar Games, the latest leak isn't very consequential, but it does confirm the team is working on a new game following Red Dead Redemption 2. So stay tuned while we find out what that game is. That's all the gaming news we have this week. Back to you, George. (laughs) It's the first time you've ever thrown gaming news back to me. But hey, 
Uh, breaking news as of the day that we are Wait, recording this. Is this your birthday? Uh, it doesn't ago. matter if it's your birthday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, but that was good. I can't even be mad. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <clears throat> but additional breaking news as the day that we are recording this, the uh, new DLC pack for Super Smash Brothers has been announced. It is four characters from Minecraft, which oddly enough, kind of weirdly makes sense, I guess. I don't know. Um, Minecraft's on the Switch. It's, you know, probably... One of the most popular games ever. I can't say that I ever got into it. John, you definitely don't strike me as a Minecraft person. No, but here's the thing. I've seen people play Minecraft. I didn't know it was like such a, like, I don't know, in-depth thing. I thought it was just basically like Legos on your screen until my friend told me that there's like a mode you can play in that's like hardcore and you literally were like lose your entire world if like you get attacked and that kind of intrigued me. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I've played, I say that I'm not into it, but like, I've played it a bunch of times and I have a lot of hours in the game, but it's just like not on my list of like the top games ever. But yeah, it's a very versatile game. You can definitely do a lot of stuff in it. Um, but Steve, Alex, a zombie, and the Enderman from Minecraft are now announced officially as the next DLC pack for super smash brothers on the nintendo switch and it is uh i think it's cool i mean i like when they do these weird crossovers like i remember when snake was announced for super smash brothers i remember when sonic was announced for super smash brothers like these crossovers are cool they lend a little bit extra replayability because now it's like you know it's not just things in that nintendo universe they they're branching out a little bit which is cool and you love to see when uh when gaming companies and and IPs crossover, but um, you know, John, I was thinking, uh, being that it is my birthday, I don't know if you heard, uh, I think that it's time that we go to the birthday boy's favorite segment, and that is the question of the week. Game marks while you sit there, hopefully as uncomfortable as you possibly can be, I want you to listen to me. I want you to digest this because I have a lot of things I want to get off my chest. I don't hate you, Marks. But the Game Marks Podcast have their own Pro Wrestling Tees store. Brace yourself because the Game Marks Podcast are now on Pro Wrestling Tees with original design to let everyone know if you will play it forever or future endeavor. Head on over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash GameMarksPod and get your tees today. Hey, Nick Stapp, how you doing? So, the question of the week is a weekly segment where we go back and forth and ask each other a question, and then we like to propose that same question to you, and you let us know your answers on any form of social media at Game Marks Pod. Last week, the question was, what was your favorite original video game soundtrack? And I gotta say, and I was very surprised by this, a lot of people actually agreed with me about Donkey Kong Country. I was very unaware that that soundtrack is as popular as it is. Yeah, so Nick Hudson agreed with you saying... Saying Donkey Kong Country is the best soundtrack, but he was also going to say Sonic 2, Doom 2, and Doom Eternal. Now, Sonic 2 was also on my list under Halo, I think. We got a scratcher. Yeah. Because, like, even right now, I could hear... Shut up. <laughs> because Sonic 2, I think, was even on my list underneath Halo, because I, those songs are so iconic. Like, they're right up there with the Mario theme. Like, you know every level of sonic like where you are just from hearing it you know that what mm, i uh you don't agree i know the main i know the main sonic theme i think i know chemical plant i know the invisib the uh, like the invincibility song robotnik and I know the robotnik song egghead, and whatever that's you want to call them. yeah i know the robotnik theme and that's it so i think i know five songs from the entire sonic series i mean that's, and i don't think i can that's even a good name amount you, i don't think i can name you a single song from two you just did. 
No, I'm talking. I'm, all those songs that I just named are Sonic One, and you chemical know plant. they're all in two, also, right? There's a chemical plant that's the second level. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm like a big said, Sonic Two guy. On it many times. Big yeah, Sonic Two guy. I was say you. We've touched on this a lot. I was a Nintendo. You were a Sega guy, and <laughs> I just was not a huge Sonic kid. All right, Justin Leaper says he's going to give one per console generation. So Mega Man Two, Secret of Mana. Here's a good one. Parappa the Rapper. It's highly underrated. Which is like a whole game of just a soundtrack. And then Katamari... Oh, that's great. How do you say that? Damacy? Katamari Damacy. Katamari it is, Damacy. It is probably one of the most ridiculous soundtracks and ridiculous video games you will ever play for the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 3! I think there's a PlayStation 4! And now there is a remastered version of the original on PC on Steam. Ha! Huh, such a great game. Maybe maybe I'll pick that up one day, and, and that'll be a, a Twitch slash YouTube series <laughs> that we'll do. All right, and then we have Rhiannon Mushal, voice actor, R.S. Mushal, obsessed with the Disco Elysium soundtrack these days, and still Dallas says Streets of Rage and Street Fighter 2, especially Ryu's stage. I like that. I like Streets of Rage is, does not get the credit it deserves as one of those games. Oh, yeah, and I definitely agree with the Disco Elysium. It's that sci-fi, not sci-fi, it's uh, Synthwave. That Synthwave style of soundtrack. Um, you ever hear of, like, like you know what, like, Chill Hop is? You know what that is? Mm-mm. So it's, like, hip-hop mixed with jazz, I guess, kind of. It's almost like, like R&B and hip-hop had a baby with a jazz musician and it's just like lyricless music that just is like you could just like kind of like vibe to in the background mushrooms take that take that and make it sci-fi and that's the, that's what uh like synth hop is like or, or, or um spit it out like like lo-fi and, and synth wave and stuff like that great but it is my week to ask. To- okay. <laughs> Jesus. It is my week to ask the question to you, Georgie. So are you ready? I am ready to hear that you forgot your question. I didn't forget my question. So <laughs> this is your birthday episode. We've had how many now? Over 30 birthdays. Obviously, you're like, what, 30? What? Thirty-four. Wow. Okay, you you have had thirty-four birthdays. I'm gonna go all the way back, maybe between ages like six, five or six, to like thirteen, maybe earlier. I'm gonna say that one gift that you just really wanted. Oh, but you were let down by it. That I didn't get it. No, or that, that I was so hyped about it, and it just wasn't what I wanted it to be. Yes, that you got it, and it was just not what you wanted it to be. What was your biggest birthday letdown? <sighs> hmm, that's a tough one. So I mean, there's a wrestling game in there. I just trying to remember what it was. Because you never remember the bad gifts. I always remember, like... Oh, I remember the bad gifts. I'll tell you mine. So... Okay. I don't remember what year it was or what birthday. I had to be young. Maybe, like, six or seven. I don't know. I wanted the Power Ranger movie Zords. And I got the Power Ranger movie Zords. Now, that was, like, the frog and whatever else it was. Yeah, and the dragon and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the dragon, I we think, was the first on... one. These were the ninjas, so it, there was no dragon. Yeah, the, the Red Ranger is like the dragon that turns into the guy. Don't don't, don't make me go into right, Power Rangers. Fine. Ranger. Okay. It was the movie one, though. So. <laughs> and it took me like an hour to get those things like clicked together and put together. And then after it was together, the frog's legs popped off. So fortunately, oh, yeah. he had the legs that stood, but he also had hands that you could stand on. So it just kind of looked like he had little feet from then on. <laughs> so not only that, but every time you click them in and out, the pieces that like held them together just broke off. <laughs> so it was just made really poorly. So I'm going to say that was mine. All right. So the first thing that comes to mind is I'm, I'm thinking of a video game that disappointed me because uh, I mean, as a kid, 
had N64 and PlayStation. I just wanted all those games. Now, I want to ask you really quick. Do you think that you can guess the game that I got for my N64 for my birthday that I was very disappointed by? Um, Jeremy McGrath Supercross? It is a game that we've played. Oh. Was it World Tour? Nope. Was it? I don't know. Tell me. Warzone. Oh, okay. So Warzone comes out in June. I get it for my birthday in October. And I think this is 97 or 98 Warzone comes out. I want to say it's 98. Um, and yeah, I, I open it up, see Stone Cold on the cover. It's a wrestling game. I'm super, super excited. I'm super pumped. I throw it in my N64 and immediately just hate the game to this day. I future endeavored it on the podcast. One of my least favorite style of wrestling games. Just something about that acclaim. I, the controls bothered me. It still is frustrating to me to this day. I just can't get behind it. But yeah, that is, yeah, that is that is one game that I was just so upset to get. All right, <laughs> I had such high hopes for it. <laughs> and I'm gonna be a real douche right now and tell you that you were wrong with the Power Ranger, the movie Zords, because the Red Ranger was the ape, and that was the backbone of the whole sword. What is the the? <laughs> What is the one that I'm thinking of then? I Am I know. thinking of the Ninja Zords? These are the Ninja Zords. They also had the Falcon. I had the Falcon, but that came separately. Of course, they didn't give you the coolest one with it. You had to buy it separately. Great content. Hold on. <laughs> I'm looking it up now because you, you told me I was wrong and I want to educate myself. All right. Yeah. All right. So, you know what? Uh, I, I take it back. You are you are absolutely right. Um, yeah. What was your favorite Red, Power Rangers Zord? Uh, it I doesn't mean, matter what your favorite Power Rangers Zord is. Let's go to the deep dive. Can't believe I fell for that twice. Hey guys, Johnny here. While we love talking about video games and wrestling here on the podcast, we wanted to share with you a new offer from our friends at Stitcher. An enormous amount of shows and bonus episodes are available on Stitcher Premium, such as Office Ladies, Comedy Bang Bang, WTF with Mark Aaron, How Did This Get Made, Bitch Sesh, True Crime Garage, Marvel's Wolverine, and plenty more. Right now you could sign up for Stitcher Premium for only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year using our code GameMarksPodcast. That's all one word. Head on over to Stitcher.com slash premium for this amazing deal and a free month. That's Stitcher.com slash premium and use code GameMarksPodcast. That's all one word. Game on, Marks. (laughs) No, now it's just a long pause until I feel like I am ready to do the deep dive. Ah, uh, serious question though. There's no way that you you weren't a Dragon Sword kid. There's no way. What do you mean? I love the Dragon you're a year Sword. Young, I say, the you're the Green a year Ranger younger one? than me. There's yeah. There's no way that the Green Ranger was not your favorite. Of course you're a year he was. younger than me. He had a gold bib. Uh, <laughs> it's the first time I've ever heard it referred to as a gold bib. Uh, that like two part series you. where they go back in time to like. Wherever they go, like Salome, like Witch Town, that was those were the best episodes. Uh, all right, enough about I, Power Rangers. Okay, I want I want Johnny Clash Green Power Ranger gear. That's all I'm saying. It's been done all too right. many times. So, <laughs> WWF SmackDown Two, Know Your Role, released November 21st of the year 2000 for the PlayStation, published by THQ, developed by Ukes. And this is, uh, I I believe we touched on this in our original SmackDown for the PlayStation episode. This is released only eight months after the first SmackDown game. So not even a full calendar year. Now, No Mercy is released November 17th. And I I gotta tell you, this game just is, is, it separates itself from the pack. I mean, 
This was the last WWF game released for the PlayStation as SmackDown, because the next game in the series, Just Bring It, comes out for the PS2 in November of the following year. And yeah, uh, I mean, the first thing that we said when we started playing this game was just that it feels, you know, controls, graphics, just exactly like the past game. It's just, you know, graphics are a little better, animations are a little better, but there's a couple of more features in there, but it feels very similar. I don't even know if I would say the graphics were better. It was pretty much the same exact game with just more features and a bigger roster. They didn't have the the face animations in the first one, I, I felt like. Yeah, there's still barely any in the second one. But imagine, like, you released the greatest wrestling game known to history, pretty much, No Mercy, and then three days later, SmackDown 2 comes out. Like, you really think it was overshadowed? Like, come on. <sighs> Now, I had yeah, both. Yeah, I mean... I started, obviously, I with No Mercy. Both. I didn't get either of them at, rele- like, launch, because I was a kid, and who did that as a kid? I didn't, like, know when they were coming out. I just knew they were coming out. So I had No Mercy, but I also had a PlayStation, so I think later on I got this, and it was like, whoa, it's like No Mercy, but different. It's like attitude Yeah. Yeah. So here's a, a, a fun little fact that I did not know. Um, do you know how much the original PlayStation console released for? Oh, it, I don't know. So, back in the day, when you were little Johnny son of a bitch, and uh, your parents bought you your first PlayStation... I think it was like a communion gift or something. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to double check this, I'm going to fact check this right now, but I am like 99% sure that it cost around like 250 bucks. Dang, that's actually a lot for back then. Yeah, that's, I was surprised by that. If you told me now, in 2020, guess the price of the original PlayStation, I'm saying 150 bucks. max. I was going to go like 99 I think I paid like 250 for my PS3. Yeah. The launch price of every major console. Here we go. So, the price adjusted for inflation. The, uh, the, the PlayStation launched at 299 now, if you adjust that for inflation, that's five hundred and six dollars today. Whoa! And it only came with one controller. Obviously, it only came didn't come with the memory card. Like you had to buy everything yeah. separately. You had to have like the TV adapter. Oh, it was such a pain in the ass. To, I actually have mine sitting next to me. I'm bringing it back home because I don't want to play it. I don't want to set it up on my <laughs> HD TV. It's just annoying. I have like the adapter. No way. But you know, the N64. It was only two hundred bucks, All right. and price adjusted for inflation was three twenty nine. But hey, fun little fact that I thought was very interesting in an article that I saw. Um, just thought that we would touch on that. Now, in terms of the gameplay, uh, so the season mode is very different. It was heavily modified uh, for you know for this game. It is a main feature for this game, and they also, uh, in addition to that, removed the preseason mode from the original. Thank know God. Your Yes, I was just going to say, going back when we first played SmackDown, it was a headache to sit through and just go, I just want to start having real matches. I just want to be like, quote unquote, on the main roster. I don't want to just be on the kickoff show every time. It felt like we were doing the pre, 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 pre show every time. <laughs> yeah. It was insane. Yeah, it's like, just get to it already. And if you like screwed up, you like couldn't do it again. Yeah, that was, you know, part of the progression also that No Mercy had. Wins and losses actually mattered and helped you bridge off into different storylines and angles and get different unlocks. Like, it was very, I guess, I don't know, interesting. Huh, imagine that in a video game. Options. Yeah. Not just one storyline. A bridging story path. Who'd have thought? Now, uh... In addition to the uh, removal of the preseason mode, wrestlers, their moves, and the arenas are now all unlocked as you progress through the season, which is a concept that I have said time and time again that I love on this podcast, which is story-based unlockables. That way it forces you to play through the game, forces you to familiarize yourself with the game, it adds replayability to the game. 
I am a big fan of that. And something we did on stream a while back is you could actually do the season mode with multiplayer support. So up to four people could play at once. So I think I took control of Jeff Hardy. You had Chris Jericho or something like that. And we were in two completely like different storylines, but we were playing together. It was kind of cool. It does kind of suck waiting for someone to like take their turn, but it's fun. But I mean, if you think about it this way, now it's probably frustrating to sit there and, you know, you're going to watch me play and then I'm going to watch you play. But like we're sitting in the, imagine you're, you know, a teenager just getting this game. You and your best friend are sitting down to play this game. You're so hyped and like jacked up to be playing as your two favorite wrestlers. Oh, the, 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 it almost feels like you're watching the show at that point. Like put yourself in those shoes of like, you know, 12, 13 year old Johnny Clash sitting down in front of his PlayStation playing this game. Yeah, we. I think we would always like start one, but then we would never like continue it the next time. We would just start a new one with like some <laughs> like, oh, no, you know what? I want to be someone different this time. I, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. With so, that. also in this game, they added a whole bunch of different moves because now, other than the directions when you press circle for a move, it could also be like up left, up right, down, you know, like you could use the like diagonal arrows as well. So, they added in a bunch of move sets from wrestlers from other promotions, such as WCW or Japan. Um, this is something we still see today, and it also made it a lot easier to make like Goldberg or Kevin Nash or Scott Hall because you would have like the outsider's edge. This was also in No Mercy as well, because I definitely remember seeing a move called the Insider's Edge, and I was like, ah, I see what you did there. Yeah. You had something called, like, the Judge Hammer or something like that. Like, it's very clearly, like, this is definitely the Jack Hammer. Yeah, even, like, all through the SmackDown vs. Raw games, I remember the years that, like, Jeff Hardy wasn't in the game. You would have, like, his entrance, his moveset, and, like, all that. Now, talking about entrances, um, the entrances in this game, I still find to be kind of fun and charming and, like, a throwback. Uh, but you immediately just were like, these are stupid and I hate them. I hated them back then. I hate them now. They're just weird. Jeff Hardy is supposed to be standing on a rope and he said, instead he's just floating in front of a giant Titan Tron of his entrance video. Or what about Triple H walking and, or no, staying still and Stephanie McMahon just like walking behind him. It's like, where are you walking that he's just still like, are you that far (laughs) behind him? Like the camera's like all the way behind the Titan Tron. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's true. Um, But also, uh, we noticed in, or at least I noticed, I pointed out to you, uh, in Xbox entrances, his face changes based on the pose that he's in, which is something that we touched on earlier, which I don't remember being in the original SmackDown game, which I found to be kind of fun and interesting and like a different take on it. Like, you know, suddenly Xbox is walking around with his his tongue Xbox. Xbox! I had to throw it in there. I wanted to see if you were paying attention. Uh, Xbox is sitting there, and he's got his... uh, He's doing the entrance, and all of a sudden his tongue's hanging out, and his whole facial expression has changed. It's interesting. It was different. I was surprised. I definitely didn't remember that from when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, it was just something different. And he stops to do the suck it taunt with the pyro, but Tori's still walking behind him. (laughs) Still not in the ring. Yeah. I remember getting this game, like, the first thing I said was, I really hope they put actual entrances in this game. And I started an exhibition match, and I was like, oh, another year of this. <laughs> <laughs> These are so bad. Uh, well, speaking of exhibition, I think, uh, I think maybe we should take a little time talking about these game modes, because there's quite a bit. So in your exhibition, you have your singles, your tag, your false count anywhere, which for some reason in this game is called anywhere fall. I, I don't know. Uh, you have your hardcore, your handicap, your king of the ring, your royal rumble, survivor, and then you have your special. Now, under your special matches, this is really the, the bread and butter of this game. If you're not you playing these, casket. you're not playing the game. Oh, yeah. Casket match. Hell in the cell. I quit. Iron Man. Ladder. Cage match slobber knocker table match special referee and the special unlockable tlc match 
which you unlock by playing through the season mode until August of 2000. Now, the ladder match, and these were all like really quirky matches. Like the Hell in a Cell, I think this is the first Hell in a Cell we ever see in a video game because there's not one in No Mercy. It's just a cage match. It's This is a cage. <laughs> like It doesn't surround the ring. It's just a cage with a top. But you can exit and climb on the top. So it's a little different, but it's there. And the way you exit the cell is just crazy because you just oh, literally <laughs> dive out the side. It's hilarious. Yeah, I uh, I forgot about that little uh, that little animation. I was just, like trying to throw you into it. I was like, <laughs> I don't uh, I don't remember how to get out of the ring. And you're like, oh, you do it like this. You just dove out. You just side of the wall. Out. I was like, oh, a lot easier than an OMG okay. moment now, right? Yeah. Uh, the ladder matches and the TLC, I just remember the belt just swinging. Like, every bump you take, it just swings above you. Like, it goes nuts. So that makes it well, hard to grab. the same thing that we had in the cage match. Every single bump that you take, even taunting, the cage rattles like yeah. it's a freaking Category 5 earthquake. <laughs> but I enjoyed the slobber knocker matches, even though they were very hard. It was basically just a gauntlet, like, where your health doesn't regenerate, so you just have to be really good. Yeah, those are always fun. That that was like the if you wanted a challenge playing a single player or like you wanted to have a contest with your friends, but like, oh how many how many matches can you We should have like, done that. I mean there's there's still time. There's still time. I enjoyed the casket matches too. Nothing we ever saw in a game before, so that was a cool feature. Basically- yeah, and I'm always very, very partial to the, the special referee matches. Yeah, those are fun too. They give you the default ref shirt. You can't be creative with it, but it's fun. Yeah. Now, game types and your game modes are very important, but you know what is just as important? Where you are battling is just as important sometimes, and this game offers quite a bit of uh, options. So you have your SmackDown Arena, you have your Raw Arena, you have your House Show slash Pay-Per-View Arena, which is just, uh, how did you describe it when we were playing? It's just like a generic arena. Yeah, it has the two entrances, like a left and a right. So it kind of looks pay per view y, kind of looks house show y, just a WWF flag. But then you have different, like, mats on the ground that you can change to make it a pay per view. It's kind of. With that No Mercy logo is in there, too. Yeah, it's kind of like a cheap version of a pay per view logo, but it's there. So I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's yeah, space it's limitations. Different. Now, the, the the real fun part, and like Johnny said earlier, if you're not playing the the special matches, you're not really playing the, the heart and soul of this game. And in addition with that, there are the backstage arenas. So, Johnny, being that you are the king of the special matches, Ooh, I like that. you seem to know a whole lot. They call me of, uh, Mr. Special Matches. I mean, that's kind of good. It's got on par with Mr. Monday Night. But being that you are, you know, Mr. Special Match, why don't you take us through the backstage arenas here? All right. So first, you exit into this nice little corridor, which actually looks like you're backstage in an arena, like on the upper, like, concourse level. So it's pretty cool. Kind of reminded me of one of those first, like, AEW Dynamite episodes where they had that huge brawl, like, through the arena. Very similar to that. You got the little curtain and stuff. So to the right, there's an entrance to a restaurant called the people's cafe takes you into like a little kitchen area with little like prep tables then outside on the street there's a pub to the right and to the left is a parking lot kind of like the parking lots we see in the more modern games when you go up the stairs there's a couple doors the left door is vince's office the middle door is a dressing room that kind of just looks like an elevator shaft but it says dressing room on it and the right door is a weight room now there's some kind of hidden areas also there's a shower room where if you enter the locker room you whip your opponent into the center of the wall directly across from the weights and the gym equipment a hole will form which leads to the shower room there's a boiler room where if you go to the basement go over to the door with the yellow banners over it whip your opponent directly to the right of the door it should break and form an opening leading to the boiler room and this is my favorite probably your favorite too probably everyone's favorite wwf new york in season mode there's a cutscene where Michael Cole says WWF New York is opening in a month. And after a few more shows, there's another cutscene of Michael Cole in front of it. And he says that it's open. And when you go to the basement, you can now enter WWF New York and play in there. Now, we had a lot of fun in a hardcore match playing through all of these backstage areas. And like we mentioned in our WCW Mayhem episode, that was one of the first games to have a backstage area with like 
you know, the load screens and stuff. This game, unfortunately, yeah. also had some really bad load screens in between each area. But it was very cool how everything intertwined and you could just travel from place to place. It made sense where they were, unlike Mayhem, where you just walk in the back and you're in, like, a farm or wherever the hell it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you got to take it partially with, you know, keeping in mind the the time that this game came out you know there's there's not a ton of processing power in in some cases when there's a lot of details like you know when you're when you're battling in the people's cafe like there's a fully you know rendered bar there's multiple tables you can climb on the table like it's essentially rendering an entirely new fighting arena yeah. it's not like it's loading everything at once you could pick the table up cool. pick the casket up you could pick everything up like it just has zero gravity the shopping cart you can get hit by a car yeah <laughs> i'm 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 willing to deal with the short wait times that there were for the for the loading screens in order to have like you know and we like to use this word a lot or maybe i do uh, I like I like to say that when when a game helps you be immersed in a in a place that it's worth it. Like to me, all of those short little loading times were great because like you were actually immersed in separate areas in the backstage arena, which you know is something that we kind of wanted in backstage assault. We didn't really get yeah. that. And I'll be honest, I played this game a lot as a kid. I didn't remember what half of these looked like. Like I didn't remember what the bar looked like or the kitchen. But with that, I think it is time that we start talking about this roster. And you know what, Mr. Clash, I think that I will take the roster this time. But with one caveat, there there is uh, one special little fact that when we were picking our wrestlers for Clash at the Feast that you had to point out to me. And uh, that would be the one thing that I would like to, you to point out at the end of all of this. Okay. All right. So starting with... The the big point, I mean, this game has 66 wrestlers, where SmackDown 1 only has 48. It's, a, it's quite a big jump. Yeah. You know, if I'm, if I'm on the roster and I'm suddenly on, you know, in this game, that's awesome. I, you know, to know that there's so many extra slots to, to, to put in more wrestlers is, is phenomenal. But we are going to start with Prince Albert. You have Al Snow, Big Boss Man, Bradshaw, Bubba Ray Dudley, Bull Buchanan, Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, Christian, China, Crash Holly, Dean Malenko, D'Lo Brown, Devon Dudley, Eddie Guerrero, Edge, S.A. Rios, Farouk, Funaki, Gangrel, The Good Father, Grandmaster Sex A, Hardcore Holly, Ivory, Jacqueline, Jeff Hardy, Kane, The Cat, Kurt Angle, Lita, Mankind, Mark Henry, Matt Hardy, Paul Bearer, Saturn, Rikishi, Road Dog, The Rock, Scotty Tuhati, Shane McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, Steve Blackman, Stevie Richards, Taka Michinoku, Taz, Test, Tori, Triple H, Trish Stratus, The Undertaker, Val Venus, Vince McMahon, Viscera, and X-Pac. Now, there is also another shorter list of people that you can unlock by playing through the season mode, and that is Billy Gunn, Cactus Jack, Deborah, Gerald Briscoe, Joey Abs, Michael Cole, Mick Foley, Pat Patterson, Pete Gass, Rodney, Shawn Michaels, and Steve Austin. Now, Johnny, this is the point where I would like to tell you to tell everyone that fun little fact that you told me when we were playing this video game so you get all excited when you choose the undertaker the first time we're seeing american badass undertaker in a playstation game right you get that cool judgment day entrance he's here he's here you're ready for american badass to play when you realize that the wwf did not get the license to american badass and you're stuck with the raw theme song thorn in your eye as the undertaker Carries down on the motorcycle. How disappointing. <laughs> you don't think they could have reached an agreement like they did with Fred Durst, where, like, we'll put your song in the game if, like, you're in the game? Like, I would have played it as Kid Rock. Yeah. But in addition to that amazing roster, there is also the Create a Superstar mode, which 
I gotta say, kinda is setting the groundwork for what we have now in a lot of these games where, you know, there's a simple creation mode where you could just like pick a preset face, but then they also kinda go in a little in depth where you like, you can pick your eyes, you can pick your nose, you can pick what kind of facial hair you have. Like, th- this was the beginning of things kind of getting a little bit more in depth with the character creation, and, you know, for what it is, given the time that it came out, it's actually kind of good like big improvement from only eight months earlier when it was just literally swapping body parts to make a character yeah i i I gotta say i was i kind of forgot about this feature because i feel like uh i think i just always associated that smackdown one style where you just pick someone's head and then hopefully you get terrible a body that doesn't look ridiculous with that head and like it kind of lines up but like this gave you way more in depth like i was i was very surprised I, uh at how in depth this was it was, it was very interesting i told you i unlocked like stone cold's like camo head and outfit yep. and i had to put like <laughs> i think it was like deborah's legs on him to get the jean shorts and it just looked hilarious <laughs> but yeah thank god they fixed that in smackdown too we had a real creator wrestler mode yeah now you know that's not the only creative uh create a blank mode that you had here so you also have a unique feature that is create a manager which was included that allows you to assign a manager as paul bearer or tory or you know any of the other trish stratus who's a manager uh you can assign a manager to your custom superstar or to a different superstar now there are also your create a move set create a stable i'm not creating no move set Yeah, I know. I know you don't like that. Jeff Hardy, uh, copy, but, paste, done. But but let me tell you, this is the first iteration of something that would be able to grow and expand the create a wrestler area for years to come. And that is the create a taunt. Now, I am a firm believer in the fact that the create a taunt mode set the groundwork for being able to customize your own entrance obviously lays the groundwork for being able to make your own finisher um this 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 is a a groundbreaking feature that was so cool i remember as a kid making rvd and then finding the way that you can make him do the rob van dam taunt in the middle of the match uh the only downside to that is it's a lot of different steps and it takes a long time to do it and you're most likely getting your ass kicked every time you do that taunt. I don't think I ever did the create a taunt because I think the like whole menu just intimidated me, so I just didn't do you it. You don't you don't like create a move set. I'm not expecting you to do an animations in a taunt. No, that's I've never ever done a create a taunt in any game it's ever been in. Ah, uh, yeah. But hey, you know what? I think it's time that we start talking about this front cover because much like the first SmackDown game for the PlayStation, this is also a very, very iconic cover. Yeah, I mean, I, this is still in my bookcase next to me. Um, it's kind of funny how they have Triple H looking cool, Undertaker like showing like, hey, we got American Badass Taker. Then there's one wrestler doing a wrestling move, which is Chris Jericho in The Walls of Jericho. And then we have <laughs> Fanny Pack wearing, turtleneck wearing rock, like front and center. <laughs> like, what an odd cover. Yeah, I mean, and this is this is The Rock's game, you know? It's SmackDown. That's The Rock's phrase. It is, know your role. That's a Rock's phrase. Like, it uh, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm just glad on PlayStation Two the artwork got better for these games because they need to either learn about like feathering or like a gradient map or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like color this, balance. They didn't need. They didn't need to have Jericho, Taker, and Triple H on this cover. Like they could have one of them on the back. I get it. But this is the Rock's game. This is his catchphrase. Like. I don't understand how you just don't constantly have him front and center. Just make this entire cover about The Rock. Yeah, but let's go to the back because the back is interesting with the screenshots and how they show them. Now, it says nowhere to hide. Prepare for the most outrageous WWF experience ever created. Brawl in the ring, backstage, in the VIP room, the parking lot, or the new WWF New York. 
Let your fury rage in the new tornado tag team mode if that's not hardcore enough. Pull out all the tables, ladders, and chairs and really get nasty. But we have a really cool screenshot here of Jeff Hardy and Edge. Jeff Hardy's flying off the ladder. It says high flying ladder match. Now, this is my favorite one. The Undertaker and Mankind in a Hell in a Cell. It says the ultimate WWF spectacular Hell in a Cell. Now, first off, the camera angle is not showing that it's not a real cell that surrounds the ring. Just, it's like the top. Now, look at the Undertaker. That's Ministry Undertaker. I was just going to say, that is old school Ministry Undertaker. So, it's obvious that the American Badass Taker was probably a last minute add-in. I would think. Right? Yeah, either that, either that, or there's an alternate costume that hitting hitting certain button combinations would let you do. Um, now it says try. bury your opponents in the casket match as Triple H and Kurt Angle in a casket match, which is a weird combo for a casket match. Maybe you know, maybe Kane should be in that. Um, create the ultimate superstar and take on the Federation. Now it has Scotty Tuhati giving the worm to Ivory. That sounds like a really bad sentence, but that's what it is. Scotty Tuhati giving the worm to Ivory. Uh, what interests me here is the good father, Bill Buchanan, uh, Stevie Richards. They're all right to censor where Ivory is in her regular wrestling gear. And then the last panel, we have Kurt Angle again, putting Rikishi in a sleeper hold in a tag match with, in a, I guess that's a tornado tag match because one of the names is grayed out and you have Grandmaster Sex A on the apron and that's your game cover. The nice little Jack Pacific logo. Now, I'm looking at something here. So, there are three costumes for Stone Cold, Vince McMahon, and The Undertaker, respectively, that are unusually hidden on the disc. The Vince is the same suit from the WWF SmackDown. Stone Cold is the open jacket and jean combination. He invaded Backlash in season mode. And The Undertaker is immensely similar to his in-game outfit, but he has sunglasses and a navy blue bandana. So there is nothing in the game data that suggests that there is any kind of uh, ministry undertaker. But It's kind of poor that they would is, put that on the cover then. There is, um, there is some removed content from the game, which I, th- I find very interesting. So, in the Create a Wrestler, there are removed heads for the following people. Andre the Giant, oh. The Big Show, Ken Shamrock, Sergeant Slaughter, Bob Backlund, and Jerry the King Lawler. Interesting. Okay, imagine Bob Backlund in this game. That would be weird. Yeah. But what do you say after that? We hit him with some more fun facts. Because, George, did you know? Did you know this is Michael Cole's first appearance as an unlockable superstar, the second game being WWF No Mercy, and his last in the series until WWE 12, where he is a DLC superstar. Did you know that there is an unused cutscene of Y2J doing his most famous catchphrase during his entrance where he says, Welcome to Raw is Jericho. Did you know Big Show and Ken Shamrock were removed from the game before release? Big Show had been removed from the production's programming and sent to OVW while Shamrock left WWF to return to MMA competition, but both may randomly appear during a Royal Rumble match and can be used in other modes via as an unlockable, although their names were removed. Did you know that if you want to add WWF SmackDown to Know Your Role to your collection, that a used copy will run you $11.99 and a brand new copy runs you anywhere between $60 and $95. Damn, okay, okay. The one I actually have is missing the back cover for some reason. I don't know why, of all things, oh. it would be missing the back cover. I don't remember ever taking hmm. that out. Maybe I switched, like, the jewel case or something. I don't know. But you mentioned the I mean, Chris Jericho cutscene. I think it's one of the only cutscenes in the game or I guess not in the game that has a voiceover because he says welcome to Raw is Jericho he actually says it it's not just text yeah it's cool it's awesome I was just just not expecting that at all maybe they were kind of toying with what we see later on where 
Everyone has a voice. Welcome to Raw is Jericho. The fans love this guy. I like it. You know, like this was the era where they were really venturing out. Now we get 2K Battlegrounds. But anyway, <laughs> but since it's your birthday, why don't you sit back and relax? Well, we go through some oh. ratings and reviews. Oh, you, you spoil me, Johnny. All right, our favorite Metacritic gives this game a 90 out of 100. EGM, an 8.83 out of 10. That's a decimal for your birthday. Famitsu with a 30 out of 40. Game Informer, 9 out of 10. Game Pro with a 4.5 out of 5. Game Revolution with a B+. Plus. GameSpot with an 8.8 out of 10, IGN with an 8.9 out of 10, Next Generation with a 3 out of 5 stars, OPM with a 5 out of 5 stars, PSM with an 8 out of 10, X-Play with a 3 out of 5 stars, get out of here. Who, who the hell is X-Play? The Cincinnati Inquirer with a 4 out of 5 stars because they matter, but overall this game got glowing reviews. Just gonna interrupt you and say, I mean... Thinking back to all of the, the, the features that we've talked about, and, you know, I am fortunate enough to be also looking at the reviews with you. Uh, is this, or could this be one of the highest rated games that we've done on the podcast so far? Yeah, I mean, definitely wasn't uh, raw for Xbox, I'll tell you that. Um, maybe Here Comes the Pain like, got, like, the, a better rating. Maybe uh, just Revenge. I don't know. Just looking at the numbers for this, I feel like we haven't seen something that was this high across the board. It's definitely been a while. Yeah. But um, Daniel Erickson right. reviewed the game for Next Generation and stated that there are tons of options and great multiplayer matches, but SmackDown Story Mode falls on its candy ass. Uh, it, you know, it was. it's very like long. It takes a while to get through yeah. an entire show. You have to like skip every match. You have to watch that little mini game where it shows who wins. Maybe you don't want to repeatedly have like an IC title match with the Godfather, I don't know. Um the game received universal acclaim according to Metacritic. The, uh, this game received a platinum sales award for the Entertainment and Leisure Software Publishers Association indicating sales of at least 300,000 copies in the UK alone. Now that I believe is like double of what 2K20 <laughs> released this year. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. At this point, I mean, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they've surpassed that, but that's pretty funny. So, as of February 1st, 2019, WWE 2K20 had sold 300,600, no, 364,738 units. Damn, and that's for like multiple consoles. That's, that's crazy. That's, painful but uh you know it's getting kind of late we're doing things uh a little bit back on our normal schedule of recording at night and uh i gotta i gotta say uh i was i was wondering if you could tell me what time it is john it's time to finish our beer and rate the games the game All right, Johnny Black, WWF SmackDown 2, know your role. Will you play it forever or future Play it forever. Woo! Yeah, me too. Woo! Oh, I was going to hit you with a, it doesn't matter, but you just hit me with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, me too. You just pressed the square button and blocked me off the bat. <laughs> Uh-huh. I did a, a a gangrel flipping back rotation uh to your to your uh your Irish whip. So that was probably uh, yeah, I mean, the easiest double play it forever we've ever had. I mean, there's there's no way that if you play this game for more than 5 minutes that you're not going to absolutely fall in love. I don't think I've picked up this game and played it probably since 
I don't know, uh, 2002, 2001. Um, I got to tell you, it holds up. It's great. It holds it's up. It's fun. It's easy. It's easy to play. It's fun to watch. Uh, I mean, this roster is awesome. It's a great, great roster full of recognizable talent, future Hall of Famers, you know, current Hall of Famers. Really? Current Hall of Famers. Like, it's just like unbelievable. People who are still wrestling today are on this roster. Like, it's, it's nuts. It's uh, crazy. I, I, there, there's not, there's not that many bad things to say about this game it was it's wonderful i think i said to you during our playthrough like why can't games be this fun today it's just like the silly matches the silly animations it's not a perfect wrestling game it's not like we're chain wrestling and then we're gonna go into the heat and then we're gonna do a comeback and get our hot tag no you're just you're just rest you're just having fun you know it's not button mashy like there is some skill to it but it's fun like games should be like that again it was a nice blend of a little bit of realism, a little bit of uh, f- fantasy, like, you know, over-exaggerated moves. Like, it, it, it had a nice blend of things. Uh, and I think that's really, that plus very easy and intuitive control is kind of, you know, it's a perfect combination. There's really nothing that you can't like about this game. So, WWE games have obviously evolved from this into more wrestling games like they're dress- they've they're way past this tna when they came out with impact cross the line all those those were more on like this like silly side but still very wrestling uh, made by midway i mean obviously it's like big head mode city but i could only hope when like AEW has a game finally coming out, whenever that may be, if it ever happens, that they scale it back and kind of go back to like these roots here. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, listen, if if Battlegrounds sells well, sold well, depending on when you're listening to this episode, if if it goes down as one of those games in line with these early wrestling games with all-stars where it's that over-the-top exaggerated experience and and they do well maybe there'll be a return to this kind of style and maybe we'll get some you know maybe that's the future of wrestling games maybe you get a release you know maybe they go back to the two releases a year like like what we had here where it's only you know eight months after the first game comes out that they release a sequel but maybe yeah. instead of that it's something where you like you get you know, two games in tandem where you get like your realistic game and you get your your fun, you know, cartoonish over the top your battlegrounds. You know, that way, yeah, that way. If you're, could you imagine hypothetical perfect world? Two K twenty comes out and it plays more and is built more like two K, say seventeen or eighteen, and it's functional and it's like that, you know, or or, or nineteen, where it's like. A great story mode. The game's not buggy. The game is nice. It's functional. It's, it's 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 a great game. And then, you know, eight months, nine months later, a game like Battlegrounds comes out. And then eight months, nine months later, 2K21 comes out. Yeah. And then, like, that's, that's the style. Granted, as a person who's buying the video games, my wallet hates Oh, them, yeah. Because I'm going to buy every game. I'm going to play all of them. But... If every game is good and every game is built properly and every year you get two options of do you want to play the serious one or do you want to play the comical one? Do you want to play the one that's like more realistic based or do you want to play the one that's over the top? You know, maybe you you go back and forth. Maybe one year, you know, you get this one. Then the next year when the new release of the comical game comes out, you get that one. Then you go back to the realistic one. Like. <laughs> there's there's a way to make it work and there's 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 a happy medium somewhere whether it's you put both features in one game or you have two releases like there's there's a way to make that work in 2020 and beyond so nhl made that i agree with you nhl put in 94 mode it it was a couple years ago they put in 94 mode where it was simple controls you had kind of like they just kind of like dim the lights made it look like an older game made 
the camera angle like NHL 94, but you had the current roster. It was only top-down view. I mean, that was awesome. And then from there on out, they added threes mode, World of Chell. They added all that stuff. So you have both options. You have the arcadey, midway, NHL hits feel, and you also have your authentic hockey game. I don't see why Battlegrounds can't be a part of 2K20 like Zombies is a part of Call of Duty, you know? Like, two games in one. Hang on, guys. This is Johnny here. As I sit here editing this podcast, it is October 2nd, and EA Sports NHL just announced that NHL 94 Rewind will be a part of NHL 21. It's like they heard us. It's going to be two games in one. We're going to get an old school NHL 94 game with an updated roster with NHL 21. Huh. What a concept. Back to the episode. Yeah, like why can't Battlegrounds be a game mode in 2K21? Right. Like why is why does it have to be? I love that. I think that's a great idea. We should be game developers. We John. should do something with games, not just this podcast. Ah, but I agree. Speaking of games, we had our October's first match for Clash at the Feast. Let's take it away. What's up, Game Marks Podcast? This is Danny Tancredi, and I'm here with my brother, Johnny Tancredi, and together we are the Cult Looking Podcast. Each week, we bring to you the latest news and reviews on all things baseball collectibles. From baseball cards and memorabilia to bobbleheads and stadium giveaways, each episode will discuss the newest products to hit the shelves of your local card store and your favorite ballparks around the country. Be sure to be following us on Instagram at the Cult Looking Podcast and on Twitter at Cult Looking BB. New episodes drop every Friday, so be sure to tune in wherever great podcasts like this one are available. The Caught Looking Podcast. Don't get caught looking, start collecting. All right, so Clash at the Feast. So we uh this is the first uh of many, I guess, best of three series that we've now decided the Clash of the Feast is gonna be after we've had uh a, a couple strings of less than stellar Clash of the Feasts that either went way too long or were way too short or were just one sided. So we decided to make it interesting and make it a best of three series. So the first matchup that we had this week was Gangrel versus Bob Holly. Who picks Bob Holly? Right. I love Bob Holly. Falcon Arrow is the best move. My favorite move. If I was a wrestler, I my finisher would be the do. I would be I'd be doing the Falcon Arrow. And you won with it. You won the first game. I did. I was pretty now, depressed about it. Yeah, why don't you take us through the second match? So the second match, we did a hell in a cell. First match was just no 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 no. I need your best Vince McMahon voice. We did a cage with the top on it. Oh, um, we did hell in a cell. Way better. Now I picked the game Triple H. George picked Kurt Angle, and he just forgot to hit that one last finisher on me. I got hit with the angle slam on top of the cage, but unfortunately you can't pin on top of the cage in this game. So we got back down to the ring. I hit him with that pedigree for the one, two, three, and game three it is. Take us through game three, George. All right. So match three, Johnny Clash picks The Undertaker, and I picked Kane. For a Brothers of Destruction match, which was a hardcore rules match. Now, I, going into the match, made a stipulation with Johnny that we needed to explore the backstage areas for our Clash the Feast video, which you can find on YouTube.com slash Game Marks Podcast. And the rule was is that the match had to end outside of the ring in one of the backstage areas. And I think that this may have been the most competitive match that we have ever had on this podcast. Reversals. Ridiculous, ridiculous reversals left and right. Uh, Battling outside in the the street, going into the People's Cafe. 
Uh, Johnny Clash threw a table at me. <laughs> I hit him with a shopping cart. Uh, we tried to throw each other into the, the, the car that drove by outside. But in the end, it came down to me being very stubborn and needing to end the match with a second finisher. And I just couldn't get it. Johnny Clash managed to get the upper hand, hit me with that last ride, and hit me with the one, two, three. Which means your winner and week one champion, Johnny Clash. Play my music. Ooh, I haven't heard that in a while. Thank you. It lives, it breathes. Damnation for that song. I was, oh, I was just gonna so say. Good. I almost forgot what your theme music sounded like. I haven't heard it in so long. But next week, surprisingly enough, is another special episode. Johnny, why don't you tell us why next week is so special? So your birthday is this week's episode. Your birthday is actually in two days, though. Next week, yes. when the episode drops, it's actually my birthday. And I'm choosing the game. Are you ready? Oh, now, I have in my head some, some ideas of what you would be picking. And I am both excited and afraid. Because you asked me earlier this week if I wanted you to tell me prior to recording. And I said, no, no, no. Let's keep it a surprise. So... What are we playing for Johnny Clash's birthday episode, episode 61? Next week, I'm celebrating my birthday by playing Cutie Suzuki 2. (laughs) Rumble Roses 2. Um, No. That's a thing, though. It is. We're playing the first GameCube wrestling game. WWE WrestleMania x8 Ooh, bobby orlando's favorite game (laughs) we've talked about this game before uh when we played day of reckoning this game you know when bobby was on on the podcast when you you posted that image of all the classics like this game has come up several times on the podcast i'm i'm excited now does this have the same kind of game mode as last time you can throw people off of a building that's being built no This game's a lot simpler. It actually doesn't have a few theme songs in it. They definitely progressed it with 19, but this was the start of it. First GameCube game, they were testing their limitations. I actually have a playthrough of the Hardcore Championship mode with Edge, I think, on our YouTube channel. If you want to check that out before our episode, get a little comfortable with the game if you're not familiar with it. And yeah, we are playing WrestleMania 18. Oh, amazing. Very excited. Very, very excited. But, I mean, we're running long on this episode. We're like an hour and 15 minutes in. Drunk blabbering. Yeah, so uh, what, do you, what do you say we put a bow on it? Let's do it. Take us home, Georgie. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us this week on the Game Marks Podcast. Please check out our Pro Wrestling Tea store at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Game Marks Pod. It is currently the best way besides listening to support the podcast. And be sure to follow us on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Leave us a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to wherever great podcasts can be found. I mean, you know what? It's my birthday. I want I want 8-bit smooth criminal right now. Because I'm going to tell everybody that uh, I'm very excited for next week's game. I'm very happy that they hung out with us this week. Uh, I hope that I have a great birthday in two days. I hope that you have a great birthday <laughs> next uh, week when the episode drops. And I Trump want to George. remind everybody, it's great. I blabble on. It's great. Uh, we're going we're gonna to wash our hands. We're going to wear our masks. We're going to social distance. We're going to be safe. And then I'm going to tell everybody... It is now time for Johnny Clash to say goodbye. It doesn't matter if we say goodbye, Jabroni. Happy birthday to George. I'm going to take that birthday. I'm going to take that 30, 34. I'm going to stick it straight up. Your candy ass. Game over, Mark. You, for, you forgot to shine it up real nice, but I'll let that one slide. Game 
Marky Marks podcast, put them on the radar. Playing rare games, second Saturn, no game shark. Johnny and George work hard and they play hard. Future endeavor games and put them in the graveyard. From the deep dive to the clash at the feast. How can I get more? That's question of the week. Follow on Twitch, there's nothing that they won't play. Game Marks podcast every single Monday.